Thank you all for being here. So, um, Casey, we were talking earlier with uh, folks from Interior, folks from uh, NOAA, and we started off, and I want you to start off there too, uh, talking about, okay, why do this anyway? Mm -hmm. Everyone talks about, okay, email to the cloud, why? What's the purpose of doing this? Well, there's a, there's a great many reasons, and some of them we figured out after we made the move, but in GSA's case, we had a real burning platform internally because our email system was aging. You said that we were one of the first to give everyone email, and I think we were still running those same servers <laughs> in uh, uh, 2009. But the, the infrastructure was aging. It would often go out. Uh, I would spend all weekend sending e test emails to myself to make sure it was still up and running. So we needed to do something different. We looked at architecting it uh, internally for high availability versus going to the cloud and determined that for us, the, the cloud offered a, a mature business offering and uh, we could save save money and improve reliability and improve a lot of our other business operations at the same time. So for us it was really, it was um, an internal kind of issue. And you had a lot of top level push oh, for saying that this is going right. to go and this right. is going to go quickly. Right. Yeah, the Obama administration had announced uh, cloud first as a priority and uh, we were trying to uh, trying to follow that guidance and so uh, our administrator and uh, all the leadership team were totally committed to making this move. So. Uh, that, that senior leadership, executive sponsorship, uh, commitment, I think was one of our most significant success factors. And we're going to talk about some of your lessons learned because I know you have a, a, have a bunch of them. Uh, Peter, after uh, you guys were awarded this contract, then you had to actually roll it out. And guess what? If she's being told it's quick, then she's going to you and saying we have to do this quickly. Uh, that's exactly right, Chris. Uh, Casey was a great boss to have. Uh, we really started way before of course, the contract award. So for the better part of a year, we had been looking at and analyzing the Google technologies from a security perspective, from uh, ID integration, all the pieces that factor into implementing something that's so dramatically different than what an on-premise tool looks like. So we had to become comfortable with that first because GSA is a, a very important customer of ours and we couldn't propose something to them that we weren't fully, fully comfortable with. And this was getting a lot of attention within Unisys as well. Yeah, I, I, always, I always joke that uh, the, the CEO of Unisys uh, came to six monthly meetings with Casey and her administrator and the president of Federal, and they all wanted weekly updates. So I was about 6'4", and then I got down to about six foot by the time the, <laughs> the thing got <laughs> delivered. I, got, I had a lot of management attention, let's say, from, from all my superiors, and it, it was a no-fail. And just before I forget, I want to uh, thank and recognize the other team members, because we were the prime contractor, but Tempest Nova is here. Uh, Didi and company are out there, and uh, hi guys, and uh, Acumen is here as well, uh, all, all vital members of the team, so it was just a great team effort with, with Casey's uh, group and uh, all the people we assembled, and, and then that guy had something to do with it too. <laughs> uh, Alex, uh, so uh, Director of Enterprise Operations, uh, you, you not only look at go government customers, but customers overall. What do folks who do this and do it right, what do they do that, that makes it easier? So that's a great question. I think there's three things that, that the, the implementations of cloud technology that go well have in common. The first is diligent planning. A lot of effort goes into planning the implementation, planning the timelines, planning the integration. Um, the second is giving it a personality, right? So making it a, a part of the organization. It's not, not just another IT project. It's not just another rollout. You can actually give it a, a brand and, and build some momentum behind it. And third is make sure you prepare the users, prepare the organization, prepare management, prepare everybody for the, uh, the implementation. I think that's something that, um, that the GSA did really well. And some of our bigger commercial customers like Motorola spent a lot of time on the, uh, on the planning efforts, almost as much as they did on the sort of technical project management pieces. Uh, Casey, talk about some of the rollout lessons learned. Mm -hmm. One of them was, I know, was uh, they say communicate, communicate, communicate. Mm -hmm. And you had a bunch of ways that you did that. We did. We had a really comprehensive communications and change management strategy that in, in hindsight served us well. We started off by really, uh, as Alex said, giving it a brand. We call this our drive to the cloud and we adopted a race car theme. We had a group of people who served as early adopters and champions, and we called them pacers because they were riding the pace car to set the pace for those who would come later. We created a whole series of strategic videos where GSA senior leaders um, went, behind the, went in front of the camera to talk about their commitment and why they thought this was important strategically and for our mission. We had uh, group forums where people could ask and answer questions. We told people, your last ditch um, uh, plea for help should be to call the help desk. You should, you should turn to your training buddy. You know, you should commit to go to training with a colleague and, and help one another. You should ask your uh, colleagues in the user form and so forth. So 
we, um, we, we created a sense of community and a sense that this was everyone's, to everyone's benefit and everyone's responsibility to be part of it. As you say, it's not an IT project. This is what's not something IT was doing. This is something the agency was doing. We were all going to be responsible for its success. And, and I know you, you had to some policy challenges as well right. in, in, in there. Talk about those. We redid our email and records and uh, e-discovery policies as a consequence of making this move. Previously, we had had a, a retention of about 60 days. That was all we could do due to cost and the operational considerations for backing things up on tape and retrieving them. Uh, we have a journaling system that's part of this solution that allows us to keep them for six months now and, and make e-discovery search is much easier, but we also had to educate people and work with legal and work with procurement and work with our records management staff to make sure we were setting this up properly and in compliance with uh, existing federal guidelines. Um, Peter, lessons learned from the contractor side? I, I, would, just, uh, I would just add to what, to what Casey said in terms of the communication. So we, we knew the technology worked. There's hundreds of millions of users. We knew that, but then the real risk was that uh, adoption wouldn't take place. So our our measurement, GSA did a great contract where they had an open-ended strategy, and their strategy wasn't just about changing email. It was really about how to create an agency of the future, how to work towards a collaborative environment, how to work from any device, anywhere, anytime. So it was a big initiative that their whole uh, senior management team got behind and pushed. So the tactical side of it was also important. So 400,000 uh, individual emails went out. A series of emails go out to the 17,000 people, uh, getting them ready for BlackBerry, all the different issues, focusing them on the user experience site where they can go to get that authoritative information that Joe Klimovitz talked about earlier. Um, so the lesson learned really was, and, and the, uh, GSA has a mature workforce. I mean, Casey excluded from that, but but there are some older people that <laughs> there are some older people that work there, and uh, to get them to change to a work anywhere, anytime on a browser interface when they're used to a fat client that they've used for 20 years was a huge risk, and uh, that communication plan, I think, got them to that comfort level where they could really take advantage of all the new stuff. Even when it's group-wise? Isn't that what you were on? It was or Lotus Notes. Lotus Notes. But, oh, I'm uh, sorry. It was, uh, it was an old version of Notes, yeah. and it was uh, one that um, we had a bunch of different versions of the client, and people were uh, n not didn't have an integrated work environment with their I would tools. think people would be just knocking down your door saying, get me off of this thing first. Well, I told you people were ready to make the move yeah. for a lot of reasons, including the fact that the email architecture was unreliable. Yeah. But yeah, there was, a, there was a readiness for a change. Um, Alex, uh, talk some about the challenges that you see in there and, and with GSA and also the advantages of doing this, because I know, as I say, you see this on both sides of the world, government and, yeah. and industry. I think one of the things, Casey, you alluded to this is the, uh, you've really got to look at some of your existing policies, look at connections with other groups within the organization, you know, personnel departments, records management, legal teams, and, and really it's time to, to, to review what those policies are and see if they fit with your, uh, with your implementation decision, decisions. It's not, it's not always appropriate to just apply the same policies to the new technology. And, and it's sometimes very difficult to do. And from what I understand, GSA, well, both of you, all three of you guys talk about this. GSA is actually using the collaboration platform, mm -hmm. which is really the why, why you did this. They're using, they're being more, much more collaborative than really you anticipated. Right. So it, this is not just about email. This really is about working differently. And we're um, using just about the entire Google Apps for Government suite. So we've tried to make as many of the features possible uh, available to our users as possible. So they are using the, the docs, the sites, the chat, the instant messaging, and so forth. And people are working in a much more collaborative fashion. And now we um, are that's kind of the default way we do collaboration is co-editing documents that are sitting in the cloud. It's been very productive. And, and uh, you were telling me earlier that uh, like the n amount of number of docs that right. are shared is most of them now. Yes, every, uh, every, pers every document that's created is shared with on average three people. And we've had times when we've had spreadsheets or uh, documents that are needed for some kind of uh, agency-wide response of some sort, where there'd be 50 to 100 people working on it at the same time. And uh, compare that with the difficulty of sending versions around and everyone makes changes and tracks changes and then some poor soul has to reconcile those. Uh, it's, it's much more straightforward. How and and audit, you know, the audit trail is much better. How important were, was the top level? Essential. Because, and, and how'd you go about getting that and then having them bless the process? Sometimes you get the corner office will say, oh yes, go do that. And then you don't see them until they're saying, why did you do that? You know, we had, a, like I said, a readiness for change. Uh, GSA, um, as, as you alluded to in your introduction, is an agency that 
um, seeks to uh, be a leader in terms of employing technologies and understanding how they can be used because we have a sort of a business type mission in that our mission is to for other federal agencies and supporting them with business services. So we want to be knowledgeable users so we can um, apply, apply uh, more appropriate solutions for our clients. And Peter, how, how important was this from your side that you had a lot of senior level approach, but also you knew GSA was very focused on this as well, all the way down the chain? Yeah, from, uh, I remember one, one meeting in particular where the administrator and all the execs are there, and, and um, she's, we were also at the bumps in the road in the beginning, because you're going to have bumps in the road. This isn't something that you can throw over the transom to a contractor and say, do this. It's a team sport. There were no badges. There was people working together. And the administrator said, um, I don't think I'm speaking out of school, she said, 20% of the people aren't going to like this. They liked what they had, and they don't want to change, and we can't solve their problem. So you have to be ready to take the fact that when you change to a whole different paradigm of web-based computing, collaboration online, some people aren't going to adapt to that. Uh, and you have to be willing to take that heat and those, and those bumps. And on the policy side, just one of the, one of the funny things that came up is Google Sites is this really cool capability to build websites real quick, project sites, and you can lay a skin over the top of it. And so from a policy perspective, some of those skins that are available out there aren't that appropriate for a government agency. Yeah, baby. Right? <laughs> There might be religious connotation. There were some other ones which weren't really appropriate. So how do you control those sorts of things? So new issues started coming up, but at the same time with the leadership in place and these integrated project teams, they make a decision, they move ahead. And as Casey said, GSA is commercially oriented. They, they, they know marketing and change. And so it was a great organization, I think, to take that first leap. Alex, is that typical? Do you see about 20% of the people who are just those curmudgeons that aren't going to do it? I didn't say curmudgeon. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just said curmudgeon. <laughs> you know, there's a change curve, right? There's, it's, there's some adapting that needs to happen. And one of the things that's very powerful is to find things that users can grab onto, right? In some cases, it's, you know, they're getting bigger mailboxes. In some cases, it's remote access. Um, one of the things that we've seen a lot of success with, and, and the GSA is no different, is with opening up mobile devices. You know, suddenly when you move to this new technology, the, there's a little more diversity in the mobile devices that you can offer. So I think that's a great way of, of kind of gaining, gaining buy-in of the, of the user community, right? A little, little bit of a transition, but you get to, you get to use your iPad, too. And, and I'm already hearing from people out there saying, hold on, all of a sudden, the way people, I think, two years ago were going email in the cloud, no way. All of a sudden, the bring your own device, mm -hmm. all this raises yeah. questions. How do you do, deal with that and other things without being what I call the CI no? <laughs> well, we've, we've, we have opened up the environment because of the move to the cloud. It's a much uh, more suitable platform for supporting a variety of mobile devices. So as a consequence of this, we've, in, in tandem with the move to the cloud, we deployed mobile device management software and began allowing the use of a few select devices based on Droid and iOS operating systems, smartphones and tablets. So um, there, there is now the ability to have a, a GSA-issued device that, that suits your work requirements, uh, perhaps a little bit more than in the past. I know GSA has really looked at moving towards the paradigm where work is some, something that you do, not right. a place that you go. And it seems like this platform all of a sudden it empowers that in some real fundamental way. It does, and it starts to create an expectation that now other apps need to be mobile enabled. So right. it's uh, trying so to it stay in front of that really curve. So it makes your job really easy. It, no, it does not yeah. make my job easy. <laughs> right. It makes it fun, but not easy. <laughs> um, Peter, how do you go about, um, and talk a little bit about the planning part, because all three of you said you have to spend a lot of time planning, and people often don't want to spend time planning, they want to get to it. Right. Um, how do you do that effectively? Uh, you know, we had, we've done a lot of uh, mission critical email transitions from different versions to different platforms and things like this. This was our first major uh, Google transition. Um, so we had studied it and done it. We had, a, we had, we had great partners. I mentioned, I mentioned Tempest Nova. Um, but really what you have to do is sit down uh, and educate everybody up front, take the time with those integrated project teams. We had a, real, a really nicely balanced set of, we had IPTs around security, we had IPTs around policy, we had IPTs around migration. So there was basically an IPT with a GSA leader who was meeting on a daily basis with his team, followed by a weekly meeting with uh, primarily Sonny's deputy who would make decisions and then pass them up the chain to a weekly meeting with Casey. So this cadence and the orchestration that you have to go through to move the 30 terabytes of data from 
Casey fortunately had already consolidated her email system to one environment and one Active Directory server, but getting all that data to move and be there on day one over time is a real orchestration and a lot of integration goes into uh, dual factor authentication, voice over internet protocol, a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, each of those teams take responsibility independently was what got us there, I think. Did you do, uh, Joe was saying they did, did their rollout over a weekend and mm -hmm. actually from the time they signed the contract, it was six months later and they were done. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, you know, we don't normally do things that quickly. Um, speed, did it surprise you all? And, and how did you actually do the rollout? Was it one of these weekend things where you came back in on Monday did, or did you do it in tranches? How did mm -hmm. you approach that? We did it in about the same time frame. It took uh, about six months from the time the project kicked off until we went live. We had uh, two small pilot groups. I called them pacers. The first was a group of about 100 IT users, help desk and local support uh, technologists who would really need an in-depth knowledge. They moved over into the new platform and operated in both the old and new for that period of time. Uh, about a month later, about 500 of our pacers, a lot of senior executives in that group, a lot of uh, sort of thought leaders and change agents who volunteered to be part of that group. But then everyone else went live um, uh, just almost a year ago. It was, uh, I think, June 20th or 21st. Hmm. And we had moved all of their active yeah. data before that time. So the, de the, the weekend beforehand, all we had to migrate was the last little bit of messages that hadn't previously been moved over. So the actual risk was pretty low come Monday morning that yeah. everyone would have their data in the new system, and it, it did work. And again, you worked with folks, so they weren't flooding the help desk. They, they had other places to go first. That's right, and we had a, we saw a spike as we expected the first week, and by the second week it was starting to go down. By the third week, the call volume to our help desk had settled at a level below the previous normal from the old system. So very quickly, people adapted. And what we did find is that of those people, we asked everyone, did you go to training when they called in? <laughs> and of those who called the help desk for assistance, 80% allowed is how they had not gone to training. So it just proves the importance of training and of, of people taking seriously their need to be uh, ready. Um, training was not mandatory. It was mandatory. It was mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> It was mandatory. Apparently voluntarily mandatory. <laughs> um, Let's say the enforcement mechanisms were lacking. <laughs> um, yeah, the BDs will, they had to go to a conference in Vegas if they didn't go to, oh, to no. their job. No. All right, come on, how can we? <laughs> um, talk a little bit about uh, the, the platform going forward. What do you, what do you mm -hmm. see coming out of all this, out of all this work? Because I know there's a lot of stuff that mm -hmm. you, you're planning on working on in the future. We are looking forward to the deployment of Google Drive. Uh, it's a, as, as you know, it's a, like a shared drive in the cloud or your personal drive. So we, we have observed in, in previous years our uh, growth in online storage that we managed in-house was growing at about 30 percent a year. 2012 is the first year we have not had to buy additional storage for users H Drive and I Drive, which are personal and shared online drives that we back up. So that, that tells you that all of a sudden the, the move to cloud-based storage is happening voluntarily. Uh, we're looking to take what's already in our, on, you know, our GSA data centers and move that to cloud-based storage uh, as a way to further uh, al uh, allow people to work from anywhere at any time and have access to their critical information. So that, that's a key next step for us. And Alex, as you see folks moving forward, uh, is this end up, does, does email just be the, it, it ends up being the first step and then all of a sudden, I guess probably users, but also folks just say, okay, well, why can't we do? Yeah, I think email is absolutely the first step. Yeah. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a big step. It gets everyone in the organization on board into, into the cloud, into the browser. We're seeing a lot of movement from organizations moving custom applications into the cloud as well, using you know, App Engine from Google, Amazon Web Services to build custom yeah. apps that integrate into back-end systems. And I think that's going to be an area particularly for enterprises of, of significant movement in the, in the coming months and years. I've, I've heard of agencies and organizations who move over to Google Apps and then they still use like Outlook or some other client-based platform for, for the email. Why would they do that? This, this is a great question. We, we, uh, so we have uh, pretty rich support for uh, other interfaces, so not just uh, the web browser like IE and Firefox and Chrome, but also Outlook, and, and we 
exposed protocols like IMAP for syncing and uh, a multitude of devices. And that's really what we want to do. We want to give the users choice so they can choose the most comfortable uh, UI that, 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 uh, for them. Um, I think the, the richest experience for us will always be in the browser. That's where the innovation can happen really quickly. You know, if, we're, if you're working in Outlook, you've got to wait for new releases, new updates to either Outlook or to the connectors for, uh, to get that functionality. So the browser is the place to be. Does it make, make it more complex if you do that? Is, You've probably seen people go both ways, so. Um, it depends on the organization. Some organizations highly manage what the, you, I don't know, what do you see, Pete? Yeah, I wanted to say that uh, we supported NOAA as well in their implementation. So NOAA, I believe, at first, was really encouraging the use of the FAT clients. They had five or six different FAT clients, your Outlooks, your Firebirds, tools like that that people were used to. And I think they felt that the transition would be less dramatic if the, if the folks could still stick to those. But I think now, and you had some stats on that, didn't you? How many people are moving towards the browser yeah, now? Yeah, it was, it was, no, it was interesting. What we saw in the, in the beginning when they, when they went live was about 70% of their users were in the uh, fat client, about 30% were working in the web browser. Hmm. And if we now look ahead, we're, you know, I think, four or five months uh, into that implementation now, um, into that production, uh, production go live, and it's flipped the other way. So now we have about 30% working in you know, Thunderbird, Outlook, those kinds of clients, and 70% and working inside of the browser. It, so it's, it, it does make it a lot more complicated. Casey's team really went for the web interface for the Chrome as the most secure browser that was built for this environment, and that really eased the training, it, re it eased the outreach, it eased maintenance, and a lot of other things. So it, it does make it easier if you make that decision that that's what you're going to support. And we did keep some users in, in thick clients for accessibility reasons and, and to, to provide them yeah. with, with uh, much less disruption as well. So. Uh, I know GSA always thinks about accessibility. Mm -hmm. Were there any challenges around accessibility issues? Yeah, in general, a web browser is not going to be as uh, rich a user experience for a screen reader mm -hmm. or an accessibility yeah. program as a client application. So that has nothing to do with this platform. It's more about browser versus client. So for those who needed special uh, accessibility considerations, we did give them Outlook as their client that, that uh, b backs up into Google for email delivery. I didn't want to get away from security, but mm -hmm. security, how did everyone <laughs> immediately, when you talk cloud, people go, oh, it's not as secure as mm -hmm. what we have. How did you deal with the security challenge? Well, I think it's important to start off by, recall, by understanding that we're not starting from a state of perfection ourselves. We're starting from a state of uh, all, you know, security is a moving target and we always have more we can do. We worked with Google for about a year in, in the process leading up to issuing them a moderate, a FISMA moderate level authority to operate. So we vetted their controls very carefully and it's been a very close partnership since then to do the ongoing continuous monitoring. So I would say that in, uh, it's, it's an important um, process to go through, and it's also a very, very important to understand what controls you as the client, as the customer, are going to retain, and what controls you're going to rely upon the, the cloud provider to, to cover for you. So uh, within GSA, we've maintained the user authentication function. So when you authenticate with your badge into your GSA laptop, we authenticate you internally and hand you off through SAML2 to, uh, to Google for email. And I, I also, I keep hearing a lot of challenges around procuring cloud services. It's a different way of buying mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, now, you're lucky you have a, a whole arm a that great focuses on... contracting officers yeah. at GSA. Um, how did you deal with that and, uh, and all of a sudden you're treating email as a service rather than it's, it's a different way of mm -hmm. looking at it? Uh, it the, the whole team, I, from you know, senior leadership to uh, legal to... <clears throat> the contracting officers, everyone we worked with, their, their perspective was, how do we make this happen rather than, let me tell you why this can't be done. So uh, it's all very doable, and we, we've seen many, many other agencies have done very similar things. So it's just a matter of understanding sort of the business model changes and how to uh, structure the contract appropriately, but we feel like we've, we've got a vehicle that is uh, flexible where we need it to, but it's got the right controls and, and safeguards for us as the customer. So we're very pleased with the, the, the way the procurement process went. And measuring success as you Chris, had, yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to add to what, what yeah, Casey absolutely. said. The, one of the great things, this is, this is a lesson learned for sure, one of the great things they did in their acquisition was they had a statement of objectives, performance-based, and they didn't, for instance, list, you, have, you must meet these 500 features. The, the typical COTS vendor game is, of course, to list a bunch of detailed features that only their product meets. Well, GSA didn't get st stuck in that game. They said, we want to go to the cloud, we want accessibility. The one thing you have to have is security. 
So we're very comfortable with that as an alternative. As we said, Google uh, has, as an alternative to in-house security, does a great job. So having that procurement shaped in such a way that you can respond to it creatively with the best value is what they did. And, and not all the agencies since have followed that process. So it's, a, it's interesting to see the challenge is something that we've created in some cases. I don't think it's there if, if, in a real sense anymore because these guys broke down the barrier. Peter, any lessons learned? What would you guys have done differently if you had to do it over again? Well, you have done it over again, but what did you do differently with NOAA that you did with GSA? We, we, were, a sub, we were a sub to a small business on NOAA. They went, they went that way. But um, I think what I would do is really spend more time up front with the leadership so that they have time to understand what the environment is, what the bumps are going to look like, because you're going to have bumps. And, and GSA had investigated this and researched it for a long time. But you're going to have bumps, and it is a big change. And if you don't invest in all that change management that GSA did as kind of a commercially oriented organization, they can message real well. But if you don't have that capability, you really have to focus on it, or you're not going to get the acceptance. And that was our SLA from Casey, was to get the product accepted. It wasn't just to move email over. That was, that was the easy part. Technically, that was easy. <laughs> Casey, anything you'd do over if you did it over again? You know, I, I, it, it sounds too simple to say that everything went smoothly. It, things, things did, for the most part, go very smoothly. We encountered a lot of technical complications and uh, worked through them pretty quickly. I think we had the right people on the team. One of the things that it turned out did not go so smoothly right away, although we quickly overcame it, was the migration of our wireless devices, uh, pr predominantly Blackberries. Um, we had a, a plan and we had a, a, a wizard type process that would walk the users through making that transition from connecting to the old platform to connecting to the new. But under the load that, it, that hit that Monday morning, that wizard process failed. And yeah. so we were scrambling for a backup mechanism. It took us a day or two to, to get everyone moved over. And of course, people depend on those devices so, so moment by moment that that was a, that was a stressful sequence of events. Yeah. A lot of calls. Yeah. Uh, Alex, anything that you'd do over again? Yeah, I, I, one of the things we, we, we Google did with the GSA project was we use it as an opportunity to learn about uh, government and, and, and large <coughs> implementations and, and immerse ourselves in it. And I think one of the things, one of the key takeaways for us, it's not really a lesson learned, but something that we've taken to other large organizations is the importance of having active uh, executive sponsorship. And I think it's something that Casey and her team did a really good job of. It's a, a big, uh, big best practice for us now, which is not just, not just executive sponsorship and sign off, but active engagement and participation throughout the project cycle. And you mentioned weekly reviews with, uh, with, uh, with you and your staff. I think that was a, a really key to the success. We were able to plow through issues, right? When there was a challenge or a decision to be made, it didn't fester for a long time. It was surfaced and, and a, a decision was made by the executives quickly. Is that different from your private sector uh, clients? Depends on the organization. Yeah. Uh, depends on the Can organization. Can you name names? I, I will not name names. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, you know, we see a mix. But it, it, it's something that we now, um, you know, as we start to engage with customers, commercial and government, is something that we put on the table early on as a best practice. It's really important that the senior executives participate in the project. It's a big change. You know, not just moving off a, a on pre not, not just moving email systems, but moving from an on-premise architecture to a cloud architecture is, is big for everyone. But Ale Alex told me they've added to their lexicon. Who's the Casey on this project? <laughs> who's, the, who's the Sunny on this project? So they're into the, right. they're, they're a part of their training plan now as so we go to other clients. <laughs> Should say, introduce, uh, Sonny is your deputy. Uh, yes. And, and, and uh, executive in charge. He's also right. GSA's chief technology officer, and he ran the uh, implementation. Um, uh, Alex, uh, are, are there differences between how the government rolls this thing, needs to roll this kind of project out, and how private sector does? You know, I think there are additional security considerations that need to be looked very carefully. It's really a policy alignment more than anything else. Commercial organizations have that. They just, uh, uh, typically, they're less defined and less, uh, less, less articulated, whereas in the government space, there's a lot more people. But again, we had, you know, we had Bo and we had Kurt from the GSA's uh, CISO team who, who, again, actively participated. And, 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 and like Casey said, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, discussions around how to not make it work. They came to the table with, okay, what do we need to do to, to, to fix this? What do we need to do to make a decision to move ahead? Uh, Casey, how do you deal with the folks um, that are, you know, are heavy users of Gmail? And I think mm -hmm. a lot of people think, oh, Gmail and what you guys rolled out right. are the same thing. Um, they're not. It's a unique product. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you deal with those folks who go, okay, I want to Google Hangout or Google Plus or right. all those other great things that I can do on my personal account? I want to do those at work too. So uh, uh, we talked a moment ago about the change laggards who 
are, are never going to be happy. You also have the early adopters who are We're probably never, going, never going to be happy. happy. Also <laughs> never going to be happy because we do not give access to every single feature. We uh, study the, you know, test the security features, test it for compliance with our own, you know, requirements and, and turn on most but not all. So there, there is a forum for people to talk about those things and we do try to communicate to them what our roadmap is and if there's a reason not to activate a feature, we talk about that. But at the end of the day, you just um, you have to be aware that they're not going to be 100% happy, but they ought to be much more satisfied than in the days <laughs> when they had so many less features. So we try to keep that in context. Um, we're out of time, but I, is, there, is there a takeaway about cloud, about mm -hmm. for CIOs who are thinking about, uh, uh, thinking about maybe stepping into, uh, stepping into this environment? Well, just to return to your introduction about GSA putting uh, all its uh, employees on email, uh, that was a big thing at the time. Email was a novelty. Uh, cloud is a bit of a novelty now, but it'll very, very quickly, I think, become the de facto way that we do business and we, you know, the operating model for IT in general. And um, it's, it's very doable. I think that um, it offers significant uh, opportunities for innovation and for cost savings. And so it's one of those things that IT professionals have to stay in front of or else they'll find the organizations that they support moving out ahead of them. Yeah, and, and being caught, uh, left behind. Right. Um, thank you very much. I, you. I, I joked about uh, the whole GSA has taken a lot of heat over, uh, over the last six months. Um, and unfortunately, a very small number of people have sullied the otherwise amazing work that most of GSA does. So thank you for doing this and thank you for being here. Thanks, guys.